today. Some of you may know me, but for those who don't, I'm Tom Anderson, and I've been in the cruise industry for over 30 years. I've worked for a variety of cruise lines. I've also owned my own tour company, which supported cruise ships and cruise companies from all brands in Canada and New England, as well as Florida. I love this industry, and I love to cruise. So just a few weeks ago, we were all saying, I'll see you in Miami, see you at Sea Trade. But everything shifted in March. Conferences and large events were canceled. The number of COVID cases rose daily and ultimately were confined to our homes. If we venture out, we must wear a mask and gloves, but we can be social, however, at a distance. In fact, this was supposed to be Sea Trade Week, but that's not happening in 2020. So here we are at the cutting edge of technology, experiencing the new normal, participating in a Zoom webinar from the comfort of our living room. Times have really changed. So is this, with this as the backdrop, Larry Stauffer and I would like to welcome each of you to this first ever webinar of Destinations Together. Of course, we wish the circumstances were different, but nonetheless, we are all in this pandemic environment together. In a few weeks, the crisis has stalled the world economy. A barrel of oil plummeted to less than zero. Virtually all travel has been minimized. Airlines are operating at 5% of capacity and cruise tourism is under a no sale order from the CDC. And subsequently, travel to the Caribbean has evaporated and our businesses have been severely impacted. But the travel and cruise industry have a track record of being resilient innovative and creative in the face of adversity and crisis. So from this chaos, we will form a renewed sense of community together. Before we start this panel, I want to provide a brief, a very brief overview of Destination Together. As the pandemic progresses, the subsequent impact on the travel and tourism industry is mind boggling. So Larry Stouffer and I want to do something meaningful and valuable for the travel and cruise industry but most importantly, for the tour operators that we have worked with so closely over the years and, dare I say, decades. This led to the creation of Destinations Together. We had created for you an open platform of genuine and honest information and interactive collaboration to support the cruise industry, but more specifically to support you, the tour operators of this region, and your teams. <clears throat> At this point, Destinations Together is constructed to help tour operators connect, collaborate, and hopefully find solutions to bridge the gap until cruise ships and tourism return to the region. We realize that this pandemic is having a profound impact and effect, causing increased stress and impacting our businesses significantly. So we have focused our collective energy on Destinations Together. To help keep everyone updated and informed, we will post useful information on our website which is www.destinationstogether.com. And we will provide a weekly webinar offering a variety of presentations, such as guest speakers on interactive panels and podcasts, as well as updates from other islands like today's webinar. Remember, we wanna hear from you. You can email Larry or me anytime. We wanna be sure that we're providing the most pertinent and relevant information and presentations. So I will turn this over to Larry to introduce himself and our panelists for today's Destinations Together Western Caribbean Update. Hey, thanks, Tom. Yes, this is the new normal. We both want to thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to our continued collaboration through this medium, Zoom chat, or website. Facebook will be coming soon, and feel free to reach out to us in any feedback, question, even to say hi. We are here for you. For those uh, that don't know me, I retired from the mouse, as I like to say, about three years ago, and have been consulting for destinations, tour operators, and spending time with the family. I worked 28 years with Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, and 20 of those years was with Disney Cruise Line segment. Times have changed for all of us, and I am so proud to be a part of an industry and so many friends I call family that, has, that have such a passion to continue the fight and we all will come out of this looking different, but stronger. We hope you all are, are healthy and along with your families, you are healthy. They are healthy. Okay, let's get this webinar going. 
Today's webinar is with two prominent Caribbean tour operators, Mark Melville from Chucka and Trino Molina from Aviumar. They will provide an overview of the key island situations and status of their business in the wake of the pandemic. They will share how they are coping and setting strategy to meet the professional and personal challenges imposed by their pandemic, which is impacting everyone in the world. Welcome guys, we are so grateful for your time and insight during these uncertain times. We all want to acknowledge that you both mark a moment in history for being the first to kick off destinations together. Before we get into the questions, can you both take a moment to introduce yourself and provide a single word that comes to mind about the new normal? Mark? Um, thanks, Larry and Tom. Uh, as both of you said, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say, uh, I think two decades at least we've known each other. <laughs> but, um, and uh, I know Trina and I are honored to be your first participants. The, aside from the word shocking that comes to mind for me, it's uh, the real word that comes to mind after I thought about it is flexibility. Flexibility, flexibility, flexibility. Uh, the word that comes to mind. Um, our business, Chocolate Caribbean Adventures, we operate in four countries, operate out of six ports. Um, we have 21 locations uh, that we operate in those four territories in those four countries. Just to almost 1,200 full-time employees and I don't know, about 80, 90 different types of experiences. Our primary business is um, nature adventure. That's our core uh, business. And we do do a lot of history, a lot of culture, some culinary. We do have a lot of water sports experiences. And most of our stuff is outdoors. Uh, we do, in Jamaica, we have a strong resort business. So our business is balanced in Jamaica. But in Belize, Turks and Caicos, Dominican Republic, uh, we are almost 100% cruise. So we're very vulnerable to this situation on the cruise side in those territories and overall as a corporation. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. Trino? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tom and Larry. Many thanks. Um, it's an honor to have uh, to work on the first webinar. It's, uh, it's a great uh, effort from you guys to set up all this and to try to start the conversation. No? Um, we've right. been uh, already weeks in through the, into this with many things going on and it's a nice to chat and to talk about and to share some experience of how we can cope with this. Um, we at Aviomar uh, last year, we just uh, hit 50 years. It's a family business. It's on a third generation of a family business. We operate mainly on Cozumel with more than 4 million passengers from cruise lines in Cozumel. Um, on top of that, we operate in Progreso Yucatan and in Costa Maya as well. So we do a lot of uh, outdoor activities, a lot of historical sites, and beach clubs, and we have a lot of, a lot of, of our team is at home now ready and willing to work, but we cannot work now. So these are definitely something that we have never seen before. Fantastic, thank you, Trina. Thank you both, you as well, Mark. Um, just a few housekeeping pointers before I pass it back to Tom. We are recording this webinar and plan to add it to our website. You may want to put your screen on a speaker view, which you can control on the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Um, there is a Q&A tab below on your screen and feel free to send through questions or comments that we will use towards the end of the webinar if time permits. There's also an opportunity for those attendees to vote on the questions you see and the Q&A that are also most relevant to you. Again, we are not sure which ones we will get to talk about during this session today, but your questions and feedback will provide us intel on future discussion points. Also, after our first set of questions, we will take a minute or two for a poll of only two questions to see how everybody's feeling of the session and possible future webinar or podcast interests. Please remember, we are only providing our opinions, and that includes Mark and Trino and possible sources for further intel. Okay, Tom, take it away. Thanks, Larry. Let's jump into the questions. Uh, Mark, let's start with you. The pandemic has affected our destination profoundly. Can you please provide a basic update, overview of the situation in the ports where your company operates? Um, so just like everybody else, uh, all of the ports that we operate in, all six ports, four countries are 
completely locked down. They're on, they're on a one other form, one form of lockdown or another as it relates to quarantine, either by law or by self-quarantining um, or isolation. The, the tourism sector in all the countries that, well, as you know, DR and Jamaica have very large economies compared to lots of the other smaller islands. So there are lots of other sectors that felt um, the hit that we got um, be behind us. But as you know, tourism is at the forefront of it. Um, the, the difficult situations that we have right now basically is that all tourism workers in all, in all walks of life are basically working from home or unfortunately do not have a job. And if they do not have a job, and I don't mean legally, I mean laid off, um, we are in some form or another trying to work with the governments that we operate with to make sure that there's some government assistance for these team members. So uh, it's, it's tough at the moment, extremely tough. I mean, tourism is the lifeblood of our company and our country and the territories we operate in. And I can't say how devastating it is for our business and for the teams and their families. And it's, you know, tourism is an immediate trickle down effect. Yeah. So it's not just us, it's, it goes all the way down the ladder. So that's a quick one. All right, thanks, Mark. And, um, and Trino, um, how, how about your perspective from Mexico? Um, as I'm sure the conditions are a little bit different just because Mexico is such a large, large economy and a large country. Thank you, thank you, Tom. Um, but, but nobody can escape from COVID-19, really. It's, it's been devastating in the, in the different ports we operate. Um, for example, Cozumel and Costa Maya depends deeply on cruise ships. The ma majority of the economy and the second activities, the third activities, all is related to the cruise line in particular. Rather, the hotel is a very respectful and it's a growing business, but then the cruise line is what drives the economy of the island. We have seven positions for ships to call, um, but right now everything is empty, you know? So with that mean, restaurants are not working, uh, uh, taxi drivers, they cannot uh, do the rides. So we're being a deep, deep impact. On the hand of Progreso on the Yucatan coast, um, the federal government just started a big investment. And now um, to revamp the port and to rebrand the port, and that still is gonna go on, it will continue, but Yes, it's a setback you know, at this moment when we were really pushing it hard. Um, it's, gonna, it's, it's just on a pause mode. You know? So it's been affected all of our businesses in all ways, in all matters. Do, do both of you expect uh, hotels to come back before cruise and, and, to, and to get some traction there first? I'm, I am expecting, uh, from all the information I hear because of our, our links with the DMCs locally, the, the, the global internet companies, Expedia, Travelocity, and even the airlines that we have direct contracts with. Everything I'm hearing, of course, there's no doubt that they are giving a range, but I, believe, I, I feel we're gonna see some resort business come back before the, before the ships do. Right. Okay, thank you. And, and Trino, do you, do you have the same uh, perspective as well, or do you, are you pretty much more uh, cruise-centric? We, we are more cruise-centric. We are more, a majority of our business, uh, more than 90% of our business is cruise-centric. So, um, yeah, we are on the same, no? We need to, we need to uh, wait until the first cruise sales from Florida. <laughs> exactly. Okay, let, let me jump into uh, question two. Uh, Trino, this, this next question focuses on your team and your, your local uh, community. This crisis is impacting everyone, virtually every aspect of their lives, both professionally and personally. How has your company or the destination been able to help the community in general and your team members in particular to cope with this global crisis? Well, uh, the first measures we took uh, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, was, was a social distance protocol. Um, even before um, 
uh, authorities and start encouraging to do this. You no, know? uh, we learned that we need to have space. So with that, we already all of our staff, all our staff across the, our, our companies, uh, we have uh, had any single case of COVID-19 among all members. Mm -hmm. So this is something that uh, we took care immediately of our staff and the well-being of our staff. Uh, second, the corporation, the company, look at the uh, income, the source of income of our staff, no? So we uh, set up different plans and stages to see how we can keep uh, coming salaries as much as possible, no? In the light of the event. Um, we haven't had this situation. We have it in 2009 in Mexico. We have the, the N1 uh, flu uh, that lasts for six weeks. That this is about the time we are at, the, at this moment for six weeks. But it was only Mexico who had the problem. Now it's, a, it's, it's across the globe. So we're hitting, we're hitting our record. I must say that um, this is the second pandemic I have uh, managing the company. Um, and it happened closer in time than a hurricane, than a big hurricane impact. One impact was by a pandemic than, uh, than by a hurricane in this time. And, uh, so, so for a hurricane, you, you prepare, no? That's what we all do in the Caribbean. But for a pandemic, we have to start thinking how we should prepare for this. You know? um, but um, so finally, the last thing that we did in the company was to ensure that our, our, for, our workflow due to the circumstances, um, planning a home office, and start to working around how, how we're gonna work in this new normal. You know? So these are the three things that we've been doing in the, in the corporation. Okay, thank you. And, and Mark, I know that you and your management team also have been laser focused on your team and supporting lo local communities. Uh, can you give us uh, some of the Chaka highlights? So um, I think Trino gave a lot of some of the basics. What I would, so that we don't repeat, I would say that um, you have a huge airline lobby, you have a huge hotel lobby, and, but in many ways, the attraction sector is a subsector of both of the, you know, of cruise and hotel. So I would say how I think the, chose, the path we chose to take was to make sure that the attraction sector had a voice in the government, in the government crafting the policies to get through this. So this, you know, we've all been through dozens of hurricanes. So when there's a hurricane, we all kind of know what to say, what to do and how to do it. You know, it's almost like a, part, a day in the park. But, but for this situation, it was never before seen. And there was a lot of uncertainty. Everybody yelling at each everybody. There's no answers. So what I'm lucky in that, you know, my our business is a partnership. While I focused on internal chukka, um, what I would say, sustainability and survival, my partner, John, has focused a, a large quantity of time of making sure that every decision being made by the government, that the attraction sector as point of view is put forward because we don't have the exact same problems as the hotels. We don't have the exact same problem as the resort sector. We don't have the exact same problem as transportation. You know, we kind of almost have a little bit of all sectors and it's been, I believe the benefit we've brought to it, you know, there's over 60, 70 attraction operators and there's hundreds of other types of what they call places of interest throughout the country and attraction. So my partner has been able to be, at, I believe, help be at the forefront of showing them what our direct concerns are, but for the benefit of all in our sector. Now this, this idea and concept of giving the attractions a voice, I think is super important, probably something that, that may not get uh, the visibility in other areas as it probably should. Um, anyway, Mark Trino, thank you very much. Those were some really important and logical initiatives uh, that probably can be replicated in other destinations. So hopefully, hopefully everybody's yeah. taking good notes. Great effort on, on, on your part on that. Um, next question, uh, Mark. Um, let's dig into a, into a more personal way regarding stress and personal well-being. Um, you both are trying to run your business with a team that is social distancing and are physically located in different locations. This can be very stressful for your team. 
In addition, your individual team members may have their own personal stresses at home. What are some of the strategies, both business and personal, that you and Chaka have used during this crisis to help your team maintain a healthy work-life balance? And how do you stay connected with, with your team, with, your, with the people who are getting the work done, even under this environment? Well, uh, uh, funnily enough, you know, of the over just under 1,200 team members, we still have, as I told you, 109 on uh, working, coming to work every day, not necessarily to the office. Um, biggest thing for me is that I found that I'm busier than ever. And I believe you guys might find it. We sign into Zoom at 9 a.m. and Zoom doesn't get cut off till 5 p.m. And it's one conference call after another, after another with DR, Belize, Turks, accounts. Um, so but you look great on screen, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> working on my tan in my spare time. But um, so what I would say is two things. Personally, um, I try to do a lot of exercise for sure. Keeps me sane. I normally just work out in the morning, but now I run in the afternoons for sanity. And then I usually give Matthew Bourbon a Zoom call at about 7.30 where we have a glass of wine and discuss industry happenings. But um, the biggest challenge for me is keeping the team connected. And we've done that through a series of mediums. Uh, of course, you know, in the old days of hurricanes, you make some phone calls, you send out some memos and a few conference calls, but this is different. Um, so one of the, a few of the initiatives, one is we do a CEO video chat every 10 days. So our teams normally hear from their respective country managers, supervisors, and team leads. And that happens in morning huddles and usual, usual methods of communications, emails, conference calls, video chat. So we do a video chat from myself every 10 days of the update industry, where we are, where we're heading. And a lot of the team appreciate that because they don't normally necessarily hear directly from me. As a matter of fact, you're gonna tell me later how many, what good things have come out of COVID. That's one of them. We're not gonna stop this video chat series. Next thing we do is um, our company is made up like all of the, is with multiple layers of pockets of management. And what we're doing is we're trying to pick a couple pockets of management each week and just have smaller groups of Zoom talks. It's a lot of personal. People just want to share the hardship that they're going through and their personal situation. And then we do just a little bit of industry update where we are and where we're heading. People need to understand that we're gonna come out of this bigger, better, and stronger. And they need to keep hearing that over and over again because it's the truth. But in the void of that being heard, you can get lost in, the, in CNN and Fox News and BBC and feel that there's no future, which is far from the truth. Um, so that's how we're doing a lot of our communicating outside of our regular scheduled meetings. Well, Mark, let me just jump on one other question for you. Um, with specifically because people, you have a lot of maintenance, horses to take care of, et cetera, et cetera. How do you, how do you make sure that all the, because you don't have these structured teams in place on a day-to-day -day basis like you normally would, how do you make sure that, that all these tasks are getting done um, when you don't necessarily have the management um, sitting, sitting on site the way maybe they were uh, pre-COVID? Work plans and photos and reports. So every department, so our fleets, we've got like Trina, you know, hundreds of pickups, trucks, and buses. Um, they need to be started every day. They need to be maintained. They need to be driven around a bit. We've got hundreds of ATVs and dune buggies. They need to be started. They need to, also to a lot of, this is a good time for downtime for maintenance time. Not that you do yeah. regular maintenance, but bring the fleet up to a higher level. We are, we've got, you know, 250 horses. They need to be groomed. They need to be fed. They need to have vet care. But nine zip lines. You can't just leave a zip line. It's, it's there. We have mm -hmm. over 50 boats floating in the ocean. Somebody needs to sleep on them at night because you have vandalism. You have people want to steal the engines. There's, there's issues. Your boats, the bilge pump stops working. It springs a leak. You need to make sure that you wake up in the morning and your fleet is still there. <laughs> How we've been managing it primarily is um, every department head or country manager, Belize, Turks, DR, or fleet manager, they send a work plan. 
and the work plan says, this is the, the work I plan to do this week. I'm going to mow the lawn, paint this building, service 10 ATVs, check the zip line, and make sure the boats don't have any holes in them. And not to oversimplify it, that is what we're doing in each territory, all 21 locations. And that information comes in. It's not as perfect as it sounds because we've had issues where we have curfews. So like in Belize, we have a work plan, but nobody could get to the sites to go and service the equipment because the police wouldn't give, we couldn't get approval quickly enough to get our staff to go there. You know, we have security managers. We have to get special permits for the security managers to go to our sites at night. You know, it's a lot of complications involved in, in executing this plan that you're talking about, Tom. Excellent. Well, th thanks for that additional detail. That's super helpful. And, and Trino? Yeah, I think Mark mentioned a lot um, of that. Uh, we, at the beginning, on the management team, uh, we set up uh, a home office immediately. And we have um, periodical meetings through Google Hangouts, is what we use. Uh, and we have a list, and we go through that every, every two days. Every two days, we check in. First is the health of our employees. If everybody is healthy, if somebody did, uh, mentioned something, even not just not just the guy at home, at his home, if somebody he has to report some uh, something that is close to what COVID-19 looks like. Mm -hmm. So, and then we go uh, everything. We go to financial. Uh, we go to um, uh, strategy. We go to damage control. We go to we have a detailed plan that we have to go like a checklist in every meeting. And, and then uh, there's one that takes notes of everything and send it to us. And so that has proved to be a very healthy way to remain productive as well, no? Um, at the same time, uh, to cope with that with personal life, uh, we need to delegate a lot. We need to let them know that uh, we trust them and they're gonna they're gonna deliver, you no. Know? And then we check it every two three days, you no. Know? But it's not something that we are in constant contact with everybody because I have a lot of a lot of uh, moms that as well work in the company and, and they are at home and taking care of the kids and there are kids that are doing homeschool as well, you no. Know? So mm -hmm. so we plan a, a, at what time each day we're going to meet so everybody can uh, at least give us one hour and a half uh, to be all together in, in, in Google Hangouts is what we do, no? And yes, as, my, as Mark, no, we exercise every morning. Um, we try to relax at night. Um, I'll, I, well, I already lose a lot of weight. I didn't realize this <laughs> because, you know, we're at home, we're, we're cooking, we're doing we are doing other things, no? So this is a balance, no? This is a balance. But yes, we need to have a set of time to do everything. Right. The first week and a half, it was a little disaster, no? <laughs> we tried to, to do everything at the same time. But this new normal, as Larry mentioned, um, yeah, we're, we're getting used to this. We're getting used to this. It's complex. It's complex. We cannot keep control of everything as we wanted. Um, we're doing maintenance as Mark as well. But uh, we're not buying anything new. Um, um, if I have uh, yellow paint in the in the storage room, we we go out and we paint everything in yellow. Uh, but we know we don't go out and buy a, a bucket of green. Let's say no. We are we are using everything that we have in the company. We're trying to be very creative uh, to do everything that we want to save and as much money as we can in order to get us through this long desert. That we don't know how long this desert is gonna last, you know. Yeah. yeah. So we have to be very creative and very uh, take care of all of our assets, you no. Know? Okay. These, these are some excellent ideas and some suggestions that could be uh, implemented everywhere and anywhere. And I think what both of you are saying is that uh, how critically important it is uh, really to take care of the teams and make sure that they they have a sense of uh, stability. Let me just jump a little bit. Um, travels at the heart of the global economy and the heart of most of us. Uh, we want to start traveling again as soon as possible. We want to get down there and see the yellow paint on all the buildings. So we would like to learn more about your perspective, strategy, and general plans for your company's restart. 
when the ships return? How do you see the restart of your business? How do you ensure that your team and your assets are gonna be ready? What changes are you planning for tour offerings and operational procedures? And how do you plan to keep your team and guests safe? And you can answer, Trina, we'll start with you. You can answer any, I mean, it's a multi-compound question, but uh, feel free to, to okay. jump in there and talk about your, your, uh, how you envision the restart. Thank you. Um, what we have been talking the last two weeks with my team is that social distance is gonna be the new norm, uh, the new normal. So, so we are designing each tour that we have uh, with what social distance patterns we can add. Uh, and it goes down to foot, and it goes to line, the way we uh, collect the, the, the guests at the pier, the way, where we do transport them, how we wanna transport them, um, update our protocol of, of, of emergency as well, including everything for a social distance, as well our waivers as well, to make sure that uh, guests when they sign in the waiver, uh, they are sure that they are, they are aware of, of these new symptoms that may happen, no? Um, our equipment, as I mentioned, is going to major maintenance what the authority allowed us to do. You know? It's not too much, but at least we need, as Mark mentioned, we need to start our engines every day. We need to um, do a little bit of painting here and there. Um, but I don't know, it's, it's mainly designing a portfolio of tools that can work on social distance. And this really have put us a challenge um, of how many guests should go in a bus or how many, uh, how we're gonna cl uh, clean the ATVs after every juice, we're gonna clean it. Um, how we're gonna design a special team that will clean everything. It's gonna be, uh, Tom, Mark, I'm sure you, you're thinking the same. It's gonna be uh, cleaning, 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 everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, Mark some thoughts on your restart? Uh, well, most, uh, I mean, almost everything, everything Trino is saying is we are doing. Yeah. Um, he's hitting the nail on the head. I would give, so then what I'll do is I'll give a little different perspective. Um, we, the restart is, a, a, I see an unbelievable opportunity for us to fix everything in our business that wasn't working just right. And we, when we sat down, we came up with a list of about 20 things and this list of 20 things is a reason why we're on Zoom a lot all day. Um, okay. It's because we have said we will not restart our business with these broken issues. For argument's sake, we do not have electronic check-in at our sites. Um, we're going to switch to that. We, we believe that our website, well, our website is not great. It's not very mobile friendly. It is, but could be better. Uh, we, we still do all our record keeping for inspections of tour equipment manually with, with um, and the list goes on and on and on. So we have a list of 20 things that we are saying that we, when we reopen, we wanna be more efficient, more cost effective, and um, you know, there are distribution channel problems that, that, not, that are not working. Um, so first part of our recovery plan, how do we restart? Is fixing the things that are not right with our business. The second thing we did, and that's from a, what I call back a house situation. The second thing we did is we said, we want to restart our, and I'm, I'm accepting, I'm assuming that everything Trino said goes on top of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We have reanalyzed every tour program and tour offering and location to ensure that um, we are offering the most relevant products for the customer, for us, the most profitable products for the customer, for us. We're cutting down on redundancies and we're rationalizing a cannibalization of products between the multiple locations that we offer, even amongst the itineraries. So that's sec step number two of how we're approaching the restart. And then step, step number three is, Trina spoke about it in detail, but I, I have to say that it's a massive project. We've got four people working on our post-COVID policy document, which is gonna cover sanitization, cleaning, and Policies, and when I say policy, policy is a broad word because it covers social distancing, it covers capacities on transportation, it covers mobile um, 
wash stands. Are you, how many mobile wash stands are you going to buy? At the start of every zip line, are you going to have a mobile sink? Are you, are you going to um, have, are you going to sell a snorkel instead of just giving away a snorkel in somebody's mouth? That type of thing. So the last, I mean, I did say three, but I'll mention one other. We do spend a lot of time working on scenarios. Um, when are we going to restart? Is it going to be 30%, 20% restart? How is it going to roll up slowly? And is it going to come back at a, what are we going to be doing next year? Is it going to be 80% of this year, 70% of this year? Uh, we, we, I think we're at scenario number eight now in terms, and we're still not sure which was the right one. But so that's how we're looking at it. Well, that's, that, that's excellent. There's so many unknowns that it makes it so difficult, I think, to plan, to build these strategic plans for a business. But uh, your, your approach and Trino's approach seem very uh, meth uh, methodical and a lot of really good uh, practical suggestions. So one last question uh, for this section. Um, and this question's in two parts. Um, hopefully the second part's a little bit more enjoyable than the first part. The first part is, what's your okay. biggest concern moving forward? And the second part, what is the most rewarding experience you've witnessed from your team since this crazy pandemic began? Uh, biggest concern, uh, frankly, is all about cash burn. Uh, my single largest concern, making sure no one knows when we're going to restart. And Trina and I have had this discussion a few times and a bunch of others around the Caribbean. How do you measure the amount of money you're spending every month versus the time, the horizon for the restart? Yeah. And for a business like ours, which as Larry said earlier, I'm not sure if it was Larry or Tom, um, we don't actually just shut down. We might have paused operation, but we are we're spending money every day, every week, every month on staff, maintenance, security, you name it. Um, so my biggest concern is cash burn. Um, we have plan A, plan B, and plan C in place, but I would be, to be frank, that's my largest concern. Uh, number two, the most rewarding thing for me, frankly, has been two things. It has been the, the commitment uh, and the verbalized commitment from our team mm -hmm. to our company and to the vision that we have. And believe it or not, I really am excited about fixing those 20 problems we have in our business. So that we can start with them. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Do you know? So the challenge, as Mark says, is, is, is cash. Yeah. We're burning that. cash every week. Yeah. So our income is, is, is for how long this desert is going to last. So we are closing all, all the, all the way the money can go. We're expen spending almost anything. We're reorganizing, renegotiating everything. Um, always being upfront. I only honestly, always being honest with the, with the suppliers, with the, with everybody, you know, this is what is happening. How do we get all this together? What's the best way? How can you help me? How can I help you? I mean, I think it's important always to get on the phone and say, look, this is what is happening, no? Because we'll need those flyers. We'll, know, we'll need those vendors later on when the restart strategy starts. When we're gonna start, that's another, another day, another webinar, no? But um, when we start, we need them. We're gonna need them. So, so it's cash. Cash is burning every week. Uh, we need to make sure that we get to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. um, what has shocked me a lot uh, in a good way is is my team. My team has been very supporting from for us, uh, and they have understand every stage of this. Um, they are willing to work. They're willing to help. They are very comprehension of what is happening. Um, I was thinking that, you know, they get nervous, money is not the same, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty on the future, but they, they report every day to be ready to work and to be a good attitude. And that's what we're going to need. We're going to need good right. attitude on our teams because we don't know how this new war is going to emerge. We don't know how much we're going to need, but if we have good attitude from our team, 
and for our managers, we're gonna make it happen, you know? And that's what we need because nobody have go through all this before. So if we have good attitude, we're gonna make it. So this is what really cheers me up, that my team is there. Well, it's, it's awesome, you know, the, the human spirit is, uh, never disappoints. It's amazing how people, despite the adversity, uh, will figure out a way to, you know, to find that silver lining and, and rise above. Uh, Martrino, uh, thank you very much for the valuable insight and feedback. This has really been super. Uh, Larry, I'll turn it over to you to do the, uh, a quick poll. And, and I don't, I'm not so sure of the timing, whether we have a time for another question or two on the other end. Yo, thanks, Tom. Listen, uh, great stuff, Mark and Trino. It was just, it was fabulous to sit back and, and, and listen to everything you guys are, are doing. And, you know, team is, is you know, comes uh, to the forefront on almost everything you guys talk about. So fabulous. Um, we want to take a moment and do a poll. We have two questions that we're going to ask the, the participants uh, and attendees uh, to do. Um, it'll take probably a minute to two. And then we've got uh, maybe one or two uh, more questions uh, for uh, Trino and, and Mark after that. So here we go. Hopefully everybody can see the poll and there Let's we go. Starting to scroll see down to the Scroll down to the second question, of course, too. Yeah. We can't vote. <laughs> we didn't allow That's you what to I'm vote. Reading here. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's uh, fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Tom, can I make a comment while this is happening? Sure. Um, to, to, to Trino's point, I did want to say that I was sincerely warmed by um, the understanding that all the people that we do business with that are not necessarily in tourism, but, but supply our sector, the banks, the insurance companies, the lease fin vehicle finance companies, yeah. even our vendors. Uh, like him, I was thinking, you know, well, you have to be honest, you have to be transparent. And, there, and I don't like when people overuse the word partnership because many times I think it's insincere. But yeah. this time for this situation, I have been so surprised at how everyone has, without even asking, you ask for a deferral or a, or a, or a pushback or a renegotiation. I'm expecting maybe a, a fight or a, a discussion. Nothing. No. Mark, what do you guys need? We know the tourism sector is in a problem and it's lit I've never seen anything like this. It is unbelievable, the genuine. Yeah, it's so encouraging. Yeah, it's been great. So encouraging. Very much. Larry? Thank you again, Larry. everybody. So Trino and uh, Mark got a few more questions for you. We're running at uh, 45 minutes into it, so it's been great. And again, we truly enjoyed uh, hearing what you've had to say and hopefully the attendees are you know, uh, jazzed about the, the responses you guys have provided as well. So here's the next question for you. Using technology, we can gain deficiencies and help maximize our market reach. Yet this crisis has virtually stopped all travel and all tour revenue. Have you developed any new and creative ways to utilize technology to support your business and keep it more relevant, top of mind for your target demographic, such as, modal, modal, excuse me, such as social media, influencers, and image campaigns? And uh, before you answer that, I want to say both of you hats off for what I've seen on Facebook and and uh, LinkedIn. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Trino, let's hear it from you first. Okay, yes, at the end, what we have left is uh, social media, no? So we're, that's where we're spending much, most of our time. Uh, so we set up uh, virtual tours, uh, where we set up a campaign, we're hitting two tours every week on, on 360 degrees. So you can immerse for at least two minutes and you go around and you, and you visit uh, different places that we have. These tours normally we have it on board on some of the, of, of the ships. So guests can do a virtual tour with our Oculus and, and, and get excited about going there. So now we took that videos and we posted. So we are having a great, uh, so 
fun. No, we cannot stop doing what we love to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Activities, yeah. tours, go out there and on, on the outdoors. No, so so we are doing it online. And on the second hand, um, the only thing that we have left is our chocolates from the Mind Cacao Company. <laughs> and so we are selling those online. Uh, so we are delivering, and that's the only light we have out there from income. Uh, we are not selling as much as we want, but hopefully this webinar will make us to the next, next payroll. <laughs> so Trino, www. The Mayan Cacao Company dot com. Fantastic. And I, I have to say that uh, I did the I did snorkel in the cenote the other day. Your three okay. sixty of getting into the cenote. It was fabulous. So congratulations. But thank you, Larry. Mark? Well, I, we don't have any chocolate, so we have zero revenue. <laughs> <laughs> I can send you some, Mark. <laughs> we need it. Uh, um, so, to, so just as to Trino's point, uh, social media is all we have. We suspended all of our contractual advertising, deferred all of our con advertising contracts. But we kept our social media and marketing team in place. Uh, they came up with a campaign. And the campaign, um, so first of all, we're doing virtual catamaran tour parties uh, once a week. There's no guests on the catamaran, but the crew comes out and they sail the catamaran out to sea. And um, we have a party with a DJ. Uh, and it's live. Uh, this last time we had almost 400 people, just over 400 oh. people sign up to watch. Wow, wow. Which is not big in terms of Silicon Valley, but in terms of chocolate. <laughs> Um, Kelly Waits is working on some 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 guests, some surprise guest DJs, which I hope work out for us. We've also done a, a series of other things where bottom line is just like Trino. The objective is to keep your name, your product, and your vision out there every week in whatever idea catches some traction. So whether it's pictures of a still waterfall or it's having our guests send pictures of themselves and then we superimpose it on an image and send it back to them. We're, we're anything that will get participation. And we have two or three people engaging everybody on Instagram. Cause remember we have a reservation center and there's no phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we will engage you on Instagram, uh, all the different mediums that people would contact or make comments on. Uh, some of our team and our marketing team are having live conversations with them back and forth, answering questions, staying relevant. Same things that Trino is doing. But it's well, the only thing we have, so we need to do it. We're and, also, and, if I may add to that, uh, we're also doing some um, Zooms, uh, Zoom calls with, um, with, with Chorex as well um, to try to, no, they, they are as well. They love to travel. They love to be with a lot of people. And now they're, they, they make friends in every port. So we'll try to keep that in all levels, no? Yeah, same. We're doing the same. Same, same, same. Fantastic. And, and I, 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 I do have to admit something, Mark, that when I saw the catamaran DJ, you know, Paula wasn't around, but I was in my office. I turned it on and I even tried to dance to it. So um, <laughs> it didn't come out very well. So I'm glad I wasn't on with anybody else. But anyway, awesome oh, stuff. Show us, show us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on to one more. Sanitation on tours is likely to emerge as a key theme. What are the sanitation standards or requirements that you might imagine when the ships return? Couple of points, who, what entity will provide them? Next is, given the global demand on sanitation supplies, chemicals, and PPE, are you confident that you are able to source the necessary sanitation items to support these new requirements? Mark, let's start with you. I was hoping you'd start with Trino. This is such a fun subject. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. I own your one. <laughs> um, as I said, so there were several teams that are still at work every day. Um, and one of them is our SSC team, which is um, safety standards and environment. And this, this team of four people, um, the chairman is in Belize, although we're a Jamaican company. His name is Diego. Um, he's from, so from Costa Rica, but 
So just like Trino, we have broken down every aspect of our business from you get off the ship till you get back to the ship. It's a closed circle. And the different variations of where this thing can take you are mind boggling to the point that you say, if you're really going to follow this in every direction, I'm, I'm not even sure where it's going to end. Yeah. Um, but to your point, the usual stuff is going to happen. We're going to do, we're going to be an extension of whatever the ship is already doing. There's going to be hand sanitization. There's going to be, instead of cleaning the bathroom, say twice a day, it's going to be cleaned every 20 minutes instead of, not wiping down ATVs till the end of the day and you wash them and send them back out. Maybe it's going to be after every single tour an ATV gets sanitized. Yep. Instead of using one harness four times for the day, we may end up using one harness per day. Same with snorkel equipment, yeah. same with just about anything. So, um, of course, the transportation issues are going to be left to be seen about capacity per vehicle, per boat, per, per everything. In terms of the supplies, what I've asked our team to do is I've said, look, anybody can come up with a candy cane wish list of things we want to do to make us more sanitized and cleaner. But I'd like us to have a, a meeting just to have a practical application of it. And I don't mean to get into a little bit of detail, but just quickly, you could sanitize yourself out of business. You know, yes. so we want to make sure that the things that we're putting in place are practical cost-effective and sustainable. And then how good is your sanitization program if it, you can't record when it's being done? Because if everybody, ever, anybody ever calls you out on it, how do you prove that it happened? Yes. So, and you don't want to go back to doing it with pieces of paper. So we want to make sure that the recording of our sanitization program is, on a, is in the cloud. It's electronically entered. So we can go back three months from today, saw that, you know, someone went into the restroom at 12.02. This is what they did. And it's been done. It's, we don't have to store paper. We don't have to do anything. In terms of getting the actual supplies, I don't feel we're going to have a major problem with that. Maybe I'm incorrect, but I believe we'll be able to get that. And last, your question is, where do we, where do, what's the source? A lot of it is our own internal stuff. I mean, we all already had a sanitization and cleaning schedule before. It's just been put on steroids. Um, so we're going to probably going to wait till the CDC. I'm definitely going to ask the cruise lines for what they use. Definitely going to ask the hotels for what they're using and see if that correlates with what we have and we can beef up where we have gaps in our program. Very good. And Trino, before you answer, there was a question that came out is, and I think Mark, you just answered, it says, are there any standard guidelines out already for tour operators from cruise lines or should each tour operator have their own? example of how many seats apart in the tour bus obviously you know you've got your steroid you know procedures set up as you said but you're going to partner with the cruise lines and stuff as well i would assume based on what comes back from them correct absolutely absolutely we we as mark is doing we're we're preparing a list of things uh, and amounts as well no of, of things um we are just preparing and we've been in constant communication with some cruise lines which are also developing their own plans, no? because this yep. is a developing story. Yep. So, so we have common things that we share, um, but I think will be, I think the cruise lines will come up with a plan and it's gonna be similar to what we have, you know? uh, and things that are common sense mm -hmm. that will help us uh, to get through this. It's sanitation, 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 each time we use the bus, each time we use an ATB, if we put helmets, we're gonna buy extra helmets in there to make sure that we can keep moving people and then we clean them, you know, we have them clean, uh, we clean them through, during the night. Um, I don't think we'll have a problem with the sourcing of products. I think we're okay with that. Uh, we already checked with our vendors and, and so on. We already have many of these things in place for the norovirus as well. So I think many of the tour operators have products in uh, these procedures. It's just the frequently of or the frequency of of how many times we do it during the tour is what we're adding here, you know, and the distance and you know, the social distance that we need to keep. Let's say in a restaurant or let's say queuing for 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 the lines of for food buffet. We're gonna change the buffet style. We're gonna give plates only with food already there. 
Uh, and we'll see how guests feel comfortable. No, we'll, we'll, we'll go together on this. We're gonna learn every day. We're gonna learn every week, um, but we're willing to adapt. Here goes, comes down to, uh, uh, to what Darwin says centuries ago, no? Who is gonna survive? The one who can adapt. And where we all need to adapt to this new world and be with good attitude to adapt, to change, to establish, and to change it again in order to make sure that we're gonna do it. And as Mark said, it has to be uh, responsible, it has to be cost effective, it has to be with a, cur a currency and with sustainability as well. Now, all these in ingredients that we're gonna use, we need to make sure that it doesn't harm the environment. Fantastic. Listen, guys, it's been fabulous. We could go on and on and on, I think. So uh, we're going to wrap up that for the questions. Mark and Trina, we want to thank you both so much for taking time out of today and sharing so much valuable information to many individuals listening today, but also those that we see the recorded webinar um, on our website and other social media platforms. You guys were great, and uh, we'll catch up later for sure. Um, I do want to thank the attendees for the many questions that they have sent forward. Uh, we will take a look at that. As I said in the beginning, we'll look at them to possibly use in the future uh, in, in other webinars. Um, and maybe who knows, we'll bring Mark and, uh, and uh, Trino back in as, long, as well as Kelly back in. Mark the is gonna team. sing, Mark is gonna sing. Oh, okay, oh, <laughs> there you go. Um, but to all those listening, Tom and I both really appreciate you joining us today and be strong. Um, we do want to let you know, don't forget next Wednesday, April 29th at 2 o'clock, we've got uh, two uh, veteran cruise executives, uh, Mike Ronan and Steve Nielsen, and uh, they'll be uh, coming on live next Tuesday at 2, so we look forward to seeing you all there. Again, Trino and uh, Mark, hats off. Tom, last word. Thank you. Mark Trino, just echoing the thanks uh, for the participating, participation today, and to all of you out there on Zoom. Thanks for listening. We hope it's been worthwhile. Until our next webinar on Wednesday, stay safe and take care of each other. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. You.